Hey everyone, it's uh, good to obviously be sitting at home after two race wins in Perth and uh, I won't talk too much about it because I know there's a lot of questions so um, I'll just get straight into it but yeah, great to get pole, great to win some races and uh, great to get some good points so um, yeah, really good weekend. So we'll start, how's the car feeling on the weekend, great job. Um, Carl, Carl was good. It's still uh, still a little bit um, uh, understeer in the front, and um, we got around it a little bit on the weekend, I think, with the track grip. But for me, we still need to focus on making the car turn, which um, which is going to take probably a bit of geometry change and stuff. But it um, it was it was definitely better in qualifying. So the car was sliding and uh, and turning, but um, if we can make it turn with the steering wheel a lot better, then we're going to be a lot quicker. So um, feeling good, big improvements from where we were, but um, but still we could do a little bit of work. So uh, we're getting there, which is nice. And um, obviously the results showed and, uh, and the, the qualifying was the big part of the weekend that, um, that you take out of it. Uh, how many helmets do you run in a year and who painted your helmet and do you do the design? Uh, I run normally run two helmets a year, and uh, one of them goes to my sponsor Monro, and they give it away in a competition. So um, it's kind of a bit um, frustrating giving a helmet away because it's the one thing that you you really treasure. But they take it, so hopefully the people who win them um, value them as much as I do, and uh, and then I keep one. So I keep one from every year. Um, it's painted by a guy in Sydney called Six Star. Um, and he does a really good job. So, uh, yeah, my design for my helmet has been um, probably around 15 years now. I keep the checkers at the back and the generic design, but then when sponsors come on, you obviously change it. But um, my basic design is still the same as what it was 15 years ago. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see the revolution. And because I keep a helmet from each year, I can look at, uh, look at each helmet and see how much has changed. But... If you ever saw all my helmets in a line, they're, they're very, uh, very much the same, which is uh, which is pretty cool. It's good to see you back on the top step. What's your thoughts on the two door Mustang? Um, yeah, I love the Mustang. I think it looks really cool. So um, you know, I'd love to see Ford stay in. I'd love to see the Mustang um, be released. I'd like the Camaro to race, and I'd like the uh, the Skyline to race. So then. You have all those brands from the historic days to uh, to actually be uh, be racing again. So um, yeah, I think it's really uh, really good if if we could get it. But I know that Ford's still a long way from uh, from confirming or anything, even though the, the coverage says what it says. But uh, team still chatting and Ford's still uh, still there, I guess. So um, hopefully they can do a deal, but. Uh, yeah, that's probably the most important thing. See the Ford badge on the grid, and then uh, and then um, try and get a Mustang in. That would be the, the perfect scenario, and I'd love to drive one. They look pretty tough, and that car that the artist impression has done looks looks really good. Uh, what's your thoughts on the tire allocation? Uh, oh, I'm not a big fan of the tire allocation, to be honest. Um, being forced to run a second set of tires when they're absolutely uh, flogged out from the start is not um, is not very good. And to be honest, it takes a bit of enjoyment away from driving the car. So puttering around, um, trying to save your tyres is, is not that enjoyable. The, the best part about racing is actually driving the car to the limits and, um, you know, trying to blow the tyres off the car. That's, that's the most enjoyable part. So for me on the weekend, although, um, although we did well, um, you know, I wasn't that excited about the uh, the race, and to me, that's why uh, Bathurst is so good because of the amount of tyres you get. We get eight sets of tyres, so practice you get to genuinely see if you're quick. Qualifying, you get four cracks at it on a good tyre, and then you get the shootout, and um, and then normally have new tyres for the race. So that's um, that's how we're racing. To me, it feels like if you went to the AFL and they had a flat football. They kick the flat football around, but it wouldn't be that enjoyable. So uh, that's what it's like driving around and flogged out tyres. Um, yeah, not a big fan, but I get why they do it. They try and keep the cost down, but um, 
but yeah, it's just uh, not enjoyable at times and, and uh, um, I'd love to have more tyres. Looks like there could be a few changes going on to formats and stuff, so we'll see. Uh, but um, yeah, we need one more set to, to really make it uh, possible. Last year we had seven sets at Perth, this year we had four. So um, you can sort of work out there's a massive drop. Just wondering how you feel about the strategy you were, you guys were on on Sunday and why you guys chose such a risky strategy. Um, <clears throat> we thought that uh, if there's no safety cars, we we're going to win the race by a long way. So it, um, you know, we, we also thought that putting reused hard tyres on was going to uh, be horrible, which it was. And um, you know, no safety car, we would have won the race by about 15 seconds. So um, you know, it was the it was the right strategy. Um, the only thing that cost us was the safety car coming out at that point. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, you know, on the radio, um, Adrian Bird just told Courtney that he's racing for third. That's, you know, we had the other teams beat, although it looked bad. Um, you know, we had them beat. On the flip side, in hindsight, when the whole grid ran hard, we should have probably copied them because um, there's no use taking a risk when, uh, when the whole field's on a different strategy and you're on pole position or P2 and you know you're quicker than them. So um, that's the only thing that I think we could have done better. But at the same time, we thought we'd win the race on softs and I don't know why my softs blew off the car, but, um, you know, Chaz still finished fourth and he made it work. So if it paid off, he would have won. Worst case, he finished fourth. So, um, so it's still not a bad strategy. Mine, mine just had no tyres and... Um, it really hurt, but uh, I think it was the right strategy. Um, and you've got to back yourself because we've got good tyre life and we're probably the only team that could have done it. So uh, risky but rewarding if it pays off. Does it make race days harder when you don't have your family with you or is it just better to have them supporting you? Um, yeah, it's good having them there. So, um, yeah, it's a bit hard with Austin because he's only two at the moment and he... Uh, likes to sort of be hard work at the track. So, um, you know, they come to the majority of the rounds to come. But, um, um, yeah, it's good to have them there. So, um, we, uh, yeah, it's good when you win, you know, as well. You, you enjoy bringing trophies home and all that sort of stuff. And, um, um, you know, with Skype and stuff, you can stay in touch, but it's not the same. So I uh, like to have them there. What advice do you have for an L-plate driver about to go for their P's on staying safe and responsible on the road. Do you agree that everyone should learn in manuals? Um, I think you should learn in manual for sure because um, if you never learn, you'll, you'll never drive one. So if, you know, you never know if um, you go to the club and your friends are drunk and you're the driver and they've got a manual and you don't know how to drive home or, um, or, you know, whatever the situation is, you might have to drive a manual. It's better off have learned in one so you know what you're doing. Uh, they're not that scary, so uh, uh, definitely learn in a manual. But thing about going for your P's is, um, uh, you know, what you've been doing on your L's is um, no different. You just haven't got someone next to you. So um, you know, don't be pressured by the instructor. They're just there to, to mark your results. But... Um, you do the right thing, take your time, and not get uh, not get nervous. You'll uh, you'll pass no problem. So um, yeah, pretend there's no one beside you, and you'll do well. Writing for my seven-year-old sister. Her name's Natasha. You might remember her from your last chat. Hi, Frosty. I'm your number one fan, and you're an amazing driver. I'm very happy you won on Saturday. I would like to know how your tyres went with the changing of track pressure on Sunday. Was it? Harder to pass. Um, that's a good question. Uh, Sunday was windy. It wasn't um, necessarily too much different um, with pressures, but uh, uh, in terms of passing, um, I was uh, I was probably the one getting passed by everyone, so I didn't do a lot of passing, but um, uh, definitely created you know, interesting racing. But um, for us, my pressure, my tyres. Looked like they were the right pressure, but they still fell off massively. So um, the boys get the car back tomorrow and they do a set down and we see uh, we see exactly what went on. But I wouldn't be surprised if we've got a few issues somewhere. But, um, 
the guys will, will check it out. So, yeah. Have you ever met a celebrity that you were looking forward to and been disappointed with them? Um, not really. Not really. I don't um, meet many celebrities, I guess, but, uh, um, yeah, not really. It's, it's uh, normally people are who they are, but I'm sure uh, people have met people sometimes that don't uh, see them as they are, but, yeah, I haven't really had any, um, any issues like that. Did you have a green set of hard tyres left or was going on soft your only option once the safety car came out? Um, yeah, we had no hard tyres left, so we either went on the tyres from the day before, um, so we would have had to cross swap the 60k tyres, so we either went on them or put the softs back on after running 15 laps, which uh, which had less, less kilometres on them, so... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's all you got. It would have been nice to have another set of hard tyres, but if we did, we would have started on them, ran a set in the middle, and then ran softs to come home, which is pretty well what everyone did. So, uh, um, man, no more tyres. That was uh, that was all we had. Uh, what is it? Great to see you have. I see. Great to see you have a win on the weekend. What are some jobs you have had other than racing? Uh, I haven't really had too many jobs. I worked at a go kart shop, and um, used to get employee of the month every every month because I was the only one there. So um, it was pretty uh, pretty much my own show, but it let me race, and um, and my boss let me. Uh, I used to pay for some of my racing and stuff. So everything you ever do is um, is pretty well to give you time or money or weekends off to to go racing. So. Never really had a, uh, a real job, but, um, but worked at a go-kart shop for about three or four years and and, uh, and then got into DVS. So um, I was the factory sweeper when I worked at Stone Brothers and, um, and then, yeah, got into V8. So probably worked for five or six years doing the odd jobs, but, um, but that's about it. Do you watch any other race series like F1 or uh, World or WEC in your downtime? Uh, I watch some Formula One, but it's pretty boring at the moment. <clears throat> so um, I've sort of gone off it a little bit. But um, I actually like the Formula uh, the, the uh, Formula Two cars. They, they're pretty cool, and um, yeah, watching the or the GP2 cars, they're really cool. So I've been watching them and um, a bit of the World. Um, World um, Production Championship with uh, with some of their races as well. So watch a bit of it, but um, F1 has really got a bit average to watch. So turned off it a little bit, but it's hopefully if it gets better, it'll um, be nice to watch again. Does the FGX wear the tyres harder than the FG did, or was it just a setup issue? The car looked really hooked up on hards. Um, I'm not sure. I think the tyres should last pretty well. You know, I think the biggest issue is the tyre pressure because we have to run 17 psi minimum. Where um, you know previously we used to run about 12 psi or something. So um, when the tyre gets to 100 degrees, they just they, they're unusable almost. And when you start higher, they get hotter quicker. So um, that's probably more the issue. But um, but yeah, the FGX I think is looking after its car, so uh, after its tyre. So. Um, if we could run lower pressures, we'd be we'd be really competitive. But that uh, that stopped the V8. Uh, v stopped that. Uh, congrats on the two wins in Perth. What career would you have chosen if you didn't succeed in V8s? Uh, I've got no idea. Um, I had to succeed because otherwise, I can't sell go karts for probably the rest of your life. So. Um, I'm not sure. I used to love soccer when I was young, so if I didn't race, I would have tried to be a uh, a pro soccer racer, a uh, soccer pro soccer racer, pro soccer player. Um, but um, thankfully, the motorsport paid off, and I've got hopefully a few more years left. And then uh, I don't know. Don't know what I'll do after racing. So I'll have to do something because I'm too young to too young to retire. Might be a real estate agent, so something like that. Favorite thing to do when not racing or training. Um, I get in trouble for playing the Xbox a little bit, only a little bit, not too much. Um, but 
like going to the park with the kids and going on the slides and stuff like that. It's pretty, uh, um, yeah, pretty cool. We went on a slide the other day and I created a, uh, took the territory floor mats out to make the slide go quicker, so that was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, just spending time with the kids and chilling out, really, because what we do is really busy and um, if you don't chill out, you uh, you definitely uh, go a bit nuts. So, um, yeah, chilling out is probably the, the best thing. Uh, well done for the start of the season. Do you believe that you guys have the car to beat this year because you have shown so much pace? Um, I'm not sure. I think our uh, our consistency is a lot better, which is which is good. Um, but uh, not sure. You know what, what happened on Sunday? Losing so many points. We're just going to make sure we we don't do that. So uh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll try and. We'll try and tidy that up, and if we uh, can be more consistent across every race, like we have been, then um, we definitely got a good chance. But the car is quick; it's um, it's good at, at tracks like Perth. It'll be good at Bathurst. It'll be good at Sandown and those sort of tracks. So um, if we can keep it keep it going, we uh, we definitely have a good chance. But you know, to lead Saturday night was um, was pretty good because we. Haven't had the best start. We've been fifth and fourth and stuff like that. But then one big win or two big wins, we went straight to the top. So uh, yeah, I think we've got a good chance for sure. But just got to minimise fifteenth place. You know that just that that wrecks you. So try and be a little bit smarter on on um, those double point races. Question for tonight: Do you own any of your previous race cars? Which one would you most like to own? Uh, I don't own any of my race cars, um, so uh, the one I'd like to own, they're actually selling at the moment, so um, my 2013 Bathurst winner, they're uh, they're selling it, but um, it's a little bit out of my price range, so uh, um, I asked for a good price and they said no, so uh, I'll keep it, but I guess you know having a race car is good, but you need six blokes to come around and help you start it, because I've got no idea how to start it, so... Um, the car, if you did buy it, would be great, but, uh, but yeah, then you need all your mates to come and uh, or guys from the workshop to come and help you. So, um, yeah, but that car's for sale and it's had a lot of interest, so uh, it's good to see people wanting to, to buy a piece of your, your history and stuff. So, um, yeah, hopefully it goes to a good home. Uh, great to see someone care as much as you do about your fans. Just wanted to ask if you could race any other category, what would it be? Uh, I'd probably go and race in Brazil, to be honest. That, um, that championship over there is really cool, and uh, I'd like to do that. Or even uh, the Nationwide Series in NASCAR would be pretty cool, but just the road course stuff. So, um, you know, that would be pretty cool to, to do that. So, um, um, but, yeah, I think also what we've got here is, is a great series. So, um, you know, we're pretty lucky. We think it's hard sometimes and stuff, but it's it is one of the best series in the in the in the world, really. And um, you know, to to race our cars and on the tracks that we do, it's pretty cool. Uh, is Ford running a dealership team? Uh, that's the first I heard of it was last night, and um, you know, who knows? I've got no idea. You, you hear about things before. Uh, um, before you actually get told, so you know, time will tell. But um, you know, I know when we do go to dealers that they appreciate us coming and, and they support what we do. So um, uh, yeah, it's you know potential, I'm sure. So well, hopefully, Ford stay uh, stay involved and we can uh, we can keep a Ford on the grid. So time will tell. But um, you know, Ford support uh, Ford. Fans are on board and uh, forward dealers are, are definitely on board, so we'll see what happens. Do you believe the Gen 2 rule changes are a positive step forward for the sport? Um, I, think it's, I think it's positive, but only because it allows other manufacturers to, to come in. But um, if other manufacturers don't come in, then, uh, um, yeah, then it'll be interesting because then teams have got to upgrade, they've got to get engines, they've got to do lots of things potentially. So um, great for manufacturers to come in, but if they don't support it, it uh, it's going to be an interesting time. So um, hopefully we see manufacturers and it's all worthwhile. But uh, at the same time, if it means a Mustang comes in or 
um, or the GTR Skyline or whatever it is, then you know, it's going to be good. So uh, time will tell. But yeah, it's good to see change and they're trying to do the right thing. So hopefully it works out. Uh, do you think there should have been a safety car with four to go when the 17 and four went into the sand at turn one? Uh, <clears throat> I think that was um, the Heimgartner one you, you mean, but it, um, uh, it normally has double wave yellows when it's like that, and the race would have finished on the safety car because it would have taken a long time to pull two cars out. So probably did the right thing, but um, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. If it dragged out, there would have been a one lap dash at the end, which um, I'm not really sure was the right thing. So I think they did the right thing, leaving the cars on track um, and having the double wave yellow. So uh, you knew it was there. So if you went off, it was your own fault. Uh, <clears throat> was a hard pace really that far away from the soft to make it worth rerunning the set? Uh, the, the second set of hards was uh, probably a second off the pace, um, but they wouldn't have dropped off as much as what the soft tyre did. So, uh, uh, yeah, but other people, you know, Van Gisbergen had two sets of so uh, two sets of hards. Uh, Tanda had two sets of hards. Some people, I think Lounge ran three tyres on uh, Saturday um, and then saved one tyre for a rear on Sunday. So there's all these little strategy things going on. But, um, uh, you know, if you had good tyres to put on, you would have ran two sets of hards, but uh, you would have ran one set of softs, but we didn't have that option. So we went for Glory Saturday as well, which um, which paid off. And uh, and then um, Sunday we, we thought we'd be okay. Safety car killed us and you just deal with it. But um, no safety car, we we would have been one, two, three in that race, uh, you know, that problem. Uh, was it just the tyres at the end of the race that caused you to drop to 15th or was there a mechanical problem with the car? Um, we'll, we'll find out because the car comes back tomorrow morning. So we'll find out. We'll put on the patch and, and do a setup. But, um, you know, I was wheel spinning in a straight line. So, um, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty hard. But um, anyway, we, we, we'll have a look and see. But um, Chaz made his work and, you know, I've been good at, saving tyres in the past, so I'm not, don't feel like I'm a dummy in that department, I know what I'm doing, so um, I'm sure we'll find something, but um, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, but Chaz made his work and that was um, that was good, Reynolds was a little bit better um, and mine was quite bad, so do the setup and find out, if not, then um, we'll just change our setup a bit and try and make it better. Uh, what do we got? If you could create the perfect race format, single driver and vet supercars, what would it be? The 300. It would have been 300. Uh, the race, perfect race format would probably be, uh, I think the 120k is a good good distance because um, sometimes when they're long, they just go for too long, they drag on a bit. Um, but 120 is good because you pit um, and you get different strategies, people going long, people going short. So, um yeah, 120 is a good distance. So if we get that back, I think it'll be uh, it'll be really good for the sport. So um, time will tell. Uh, what do we got? Strategy was the only downfall on the weekend. Are you happy where the car is at this point? What needs to improve? Tie off maybe. Um, the biggest improvement we need is uh, um, still a bit more turn. So um, the guys are working on that. We um, we had good upgrades and good. Um, development for the weekend, but for me, the turn's still the issue. So if we fix that, then we're um, we're definitely uh, we're definitely going to go better. So um, we'll fix the fix the front end, make a turn, and um, everything we do makes the car. Uh, we can either make it turn on entry or grip up on exit, but we can't make it turn in the middle. So if we can do that, we'll make it drive, and um, the car will be awesome. So that's what we'll work on. I remember last time you wanted to you wanted us to ask questions that we think we probably shouldn't, so I decided to. Does the business side of motorsport racing get in the way or interfere at all with the ability to stay focused? Would you be lured by a big money deal overseas by an overseas manufacturer and have you had offers to race with other teams or manufacturers? Um, 
Oh, it's a business because end of the day, it's um, it's your job because uh, you know you got a family and and one day it will stop. So you got to do the best thing by your family, but um, ultimately the the results are the thing that you you race for. You know, you you go out and you race with the best team for the for what you think is the best opportunity to win. Um, so you know, if other teams offer that, and you didn't think you could win at your team. You have to look at it because. Um, you know, regret's a big thing, and if you get 20 years down the track and regret making a decision, then you, you get old and miserable. So, for me, uh, I've tried to be in the best team at the right time, I think. And you know, Triple H won everything, and we've been second to them. So, I'm not racing for Triple H. So, um, you know, I've tried to put myself at the best team other than them. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if the decision works out over the uh, the career, but. Um, you know, I enjoy it as well, having the team I've got and having Chaz as a teammate. It's actually really enjoyable. So, you know, we, we spend a lot of time together and there's uh, there's drivers out there who don't get along, even though they say they do. So um, it's nice to genuinely have fun at a track too and enjoy your uh, enjoy your lifestyle. Um, our team's really good with the family as well. So for me, family's important. So there's lots of reasons, but ultimately, um, you know, put yourself with the best team, the best opportunity and... The, uh, everything else looks after itself. Uh, will you be designing a frosty hoodie? I'm curious how the design your own clothing came about. Um, I haven't got a hoodie, but um, uh, the team said we'd like you to design some stuff. You get some items. So one of them was my frosty cap, which I'm actually going to give away tonight. I've got some really good questions. Um, but uh, yeah, we didn't come up with a hoodie. Chaz had a hoodie. I think Dave's got a hoodie, so I thought I'd go a t-shirt and a kid's hat and an adult shirt, a kid's shirt as well. So, um, yeah, we designed them and it's pretty cool that the team let you do it and when you see people wearing your gear, it's uh, it's also pretty cool as well. So um, that's sort of how that all come about. How do you react to fans who aren't happy that they can't watch you and the other drivers as they can't afford Foxtel as they all as all they get is a hollow package of so 15 minutes of ads and 10 minutes of racing. Um, it's sort of it's sort of how I sort of covered it last time, but the uh, the Foxtel um, agreement is pretty well it's pretty well a sponsor to be honest. So they um, they support us in the series. They um, they uh, you know give us TV rights and um, keep the sport going. If we didn't have Foxtel, I think there would be probably half the cars on the grid. So from that side of it, it was really important. Um, you know, Channel Ten obviously covers six races, which which is great. But their uh, their highlights package has copped a bit of criticism. So um, I sort of understand it from every side. But from a driver's point of view, you know, we, we pretty well potentially wouldn't be racing if Foxtel didn't come on board. So you know, you, you got to support that. I know people are disappointed with it, but you know, for me, that one of the fixes might be to um, for Foxtel to actually give a month's free subscription or whatever it is so people can actually watch it for a month and, and see how much better it is because, um, you know, it's hard to, to go and pay $50 for your first um, commitment or you, you sign up for 12 months, you're sort of committed. But I really think if people had a look at it and saw the uh, the, the high definition and the, the actual footage and the quality, they really appreciate it. But um, you know, from our point of view, we can't change anything. And I know, you know, majority of my posts on Facebook it comments about Foxtel, but you know, complaining to me, I, I can't change it. So, um, what I can do is chats like tonight, keep you informed. Um, you know, do updates on my Facebook page and try and give back as much as I can. And that's um, that's what I can do. But in terms of Foxtel, you know, they could give you a month's free, then that would be awesome because I really think it's great coverage and. Um, you know, it's what our sport needed. So um, I know it's not what people want to hear, but really, it, it's really important for our sport. So um, yeah, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? If they like my idea, that would uh, I think people would really come on board. Uh, last couple. Um, what would your advice be to a young car to try to make it to V8 supercars? Um, it's, it's tough. It's a tough uh, step, but. Um, you know, you just got to try and keep winning races and, and doing what you do. You know, in, in karting, people actually watch, although you think people don't 
watch you. There are people watching. So, um, yeah, try and do well. You know, I come out of carts. Chaz come out of carts um, without any money. So it is possible. Um, you just got to stay committed and and um, and just know that people are watching, even when you think they are. Um, people are watching. So, but you got to enjoy it as well. So, um, uh, yeah, keep keep at it. Keep enjoying it. Just, um, stay focused and. You never know what will what will happen. All right, last one. You did great on the week, or Frosty. Keep up the safety first stuff for the kids. That's what won me over to you, mate. A good bastard, and I wish you all the success. Thank you. Um, yeah, safety first are great sponsors. So um, it's uh, yeah, it's great, but um, it's great they give away prizes and at, uh, appearances and stuff. So I actually did a baby. Bunting appearance the other day, which was my first baby shop appearance and, uh, in Ballarat. There was actually about 300 people there and they gave away car seats and stuff. So it's nice having you know, someone that gives back to, to your supporters and um, it's nice to make sure that kids are out there and they're safe because uh, that's probably the main thing. That's why you're promoting it and uh, it's great that uh, they give back as well. All right, last one. Winton last year gave you some good results, second on Saturday, first on Sunday. So considering you had superior chassis under your belt this year, is the expectation high? Um, we Normally we go to Winton and we've tested one or two days, but um, we haven't tested or driven an FGX at Winton, which is bizarre having your home test track without actually testing. But we, um, we always seem to roll out well at Winton. So I'm expecting to go well, but... Uh, um, you know, Tom will tell us a lot of good cars and, uh, and they all do well. But for me, the, when people come from Queensland and beat you on your home track, it uh, really rubs a bit of salt in the wound. So, um, yeah, hopefully we do well. But again, first time to Winton in a year that you haven't tested before the race, which, which is kind of strange. So uh, we'll see how we go. All right. So we're going to give away a cap. So one of my design caps, it's good for adults as well as it is for kids. I don't mind wearing this one. So I'm going to go for three questions, true or false. And the first one who posts back on my latest feed, the answers, is going to win the cap. All right, first one. My last pole position was at Phillip Island in 2013. My sister is a photographer. So these are all true or false. So all you can answer is true, 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 false, true, false, 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 whatever it is. So go one, two, three, and put a T or an F next to it. My third one is I have a pair of pyjamas that had Mr. Men on them. Seriously. You think that? Thanks, guys. I'm out of here.